is, is your testimony. In uh, Revelation 12, chapter, uh, chapter 12, verse 11, the Bible says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So your testimony is a powerful testimony. No, no one can, uh, can argue against your testimony and what you have found has helped in your life. So this lady and this man who conquered their arthritis then came in to our retreat, they'd conquered it by basically implementing everything that I've shown you here. They, now long, they no longer had arthritis. And the lady said to me, can we start to eat some of the nightshade foods? Could we start to maybe eat a little bit of wheat? And I said to her, your body will tell you. One lady said, but I love these foods. I said, how much do you love your arthritis? It's not forever. It's like what this lady testified. Once she'd implemented all of this and her arthritis was conquered, her, she is now in a situation where she thinks, hmm, I'll give it a try. And this is what she found. She found that she could eat half a tomato three days a week. She found that she could eat a small potato most days. Her body told her not to touch the bell pepper. And the eggplant, she said, I might have that once a month. It's not a food we eat a lot of. She said, and the wheat, she said, I was out at a restaurant and I had some pasta that was made of wheat. She said, I had no reaction. So the next day I had another dish, we were traveling, of pasta. And she said, I started to get some little bit of, little bit of um, twinges in my joints. So can you see what her body was saying to her? You can have a dish of wheat pasta maybe once a week, but not every day. You see, no, no man can tell you what your body can tell you. My mother died a cripple in a wheelchair at 51 with rheumatoid arthritis. She had severe arthritis. She was, she was only five stone when she died and her hands were all cramped up. Her, her knees were twice as wide as mine. Her feet, she could not walk anymore. Little by little by little, the arthritis had taken over her body. Now, my mum loved cups of tea and she had three cups of tea a day and she always had some milk and some sugar in her cups of tea. She always had white toast for breakfast. She always had sandwiches for lunch, white toast with cheese on it, sometimes white toast with ham on it. She also, for tea every night, had chops or sausages and mashed potato and maybe some frozen peas. And sometimes they would have ice cream. Can you see that my mum had a diet that just fed her arthritis? She didn't know. My dad didn't know. I was just a teenager at the time in my early 20s. I didn't know. But something triggered mum's arthritis. My dad made a decision to start a new business, which my mum was not really happy about. But my mum agreed reluctantly. And my mum carried some resentment because she did not want to move. She didn't want to leave the house that she'd lived in for so long. So she reluctantly moved. And my mum held on to this anger. In fact, when she passed, my dad took his five children aside and he told us these things. He told us as an illustration because he did not want his children to go through what his wife had gone through. And dad believed that a large part of mum's illness was due to her emotional state, that she, she was angry and bitter and resentful at having to move but she just did it, but she carried that with her. Within six months of moving into the new business and the house that was attached to it, she got pains in her joints. Within one year, um, she basically was in a wheelchair. My mother went to the doctor, as it's all we knew then. They put her on cortisone. They put her on anti-inflammatories. And then there were times when my mum had to come off this medication because the doctors knew it was harming her, 
her, her internal organs. And then we went through watching my mum go through terrible withdrawals. And I was, I was working as a psychiatric nurse at the time and I was working in an operating theatre. And I saw the surgeons do surgery on hands to free up um, clamped up joints. And I told my mum and my dad and they arranged for mum to have surgery to try and free up her hands that were like this. It really didn't do very much, unfortunately. And then when mum was really crippled in, in a wheelchair, my, my partner and I, we moved to an area where there were Seventh-day Adventists. I'd never heard of a Seventh-day Adventist. And the people next door were Seventh-day Adventists and they had a visitor named Daisy. Now Daisy was a lovely lady. She was probably in her 60s. I was in my early 20s at the time. And I met Daisy and we talked and I told her about my mum and she said, I think we can help your mum. I said, really, how? how? She said, well, I have a team and we do natural remedies and I believe we can help your mum. I immediately rang up my dad. I said, Dad, I have just met a woman who believes she can help mum because we really had exhausted the medical way. There was nothing else that they could do for my mum. So my dad flew straight up to where Daisy lived in Queensland. He talked to Daisy and he talked to her, her partner in the business called George and Dad was convinced that they could help my mum. And so we flew mum up. Mum stayed with them for six weeks. By the end of the six weeks, mum was off all her medication and she was pain free. It was just incredible. All of our kids, because we're, you know, we're in our teens and 20s, my brother was 27, I was 25, and then my three sisters down to my younger sister, who was about 17 at the time, we, we were just amazed. We, we'd never heard of natural remedies. We, we'd never heard of such a thing. But we saw what happened with mum. Mum became pain-free. Mum was off all her medication. Now it was time to build up mum's body. <laughs> mum's body was deformed and weak. And when Daisy talked to my mum about building up her body and starting to do simple exercises like squeezing a ball and getting some strength into her hand, my mum was not cooperative with this. So Daisy rang my mum and she said, uh, we can do no more for your mum we, or your wife. We've got her pain free. We've got her off her meds. It, Maybe you could uh, put her in a place that does exercise and show her how to build up her body. But my mum was not interested. Two days after they brought my mum back, um, my mum died in the night. We think that my mum maybe even willed herself to death. It, it, it was a very difficult experience for all of us. And my dad changed his whole life from what he saw happen to my mum. He went to a health retreat, he went on a seven day uh, cleanse and from that health retreat, he was 51 too, he has never eaten meat again. He had a total change in his lifestyle because of what he saw happen with mum. It had a dramatic effect on me. Uh, I'd already become a vegetarian and it was six months after mum passed that I surrendered my heart to God and became a Christian. I was very interested in the Seventh-day Adventists because I found that they keep to the Bible. I discovered the truth of what happens when you die, which excited me because I thought mum was floating around watching me. And when I read what the Bible said, 52 times in the Bible, the Bible calls death sleep. And then I realized my mum wasn't floating around watching me. She was asleep. I read about the second coming of Jesus. I read about the truth of the Sabbath. And I also read about our bodies have been designed to heal themselves. So I never realized that here we are years and years later that I am doing the very things that Daisy did to my mum. I'm doing the very things that... Uh, my family and I, we had never heard of. 
And this is why it is a very real message to me that I believe if my mother had realised at a younger age the things that are contributing or contributed to her illnesses and also the freedom that God gives even in the resentments that we can carry. He says in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, he says, Come unto me all ye that labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lonely of heart, and you will find rest under your souls. And I realise that my mum could certainly have experienced freedom from the, from the resentment that she carried. It is a beautiful message. It is a whole message. So when you look at those eight laws of health, they are a whole message.